In the previous video of this series, you saw how non-local variables can be used to communicate data between procedures and to share data between one form and another. If a variable is declared within a procedure, then it is local to that procedure. It can only be used by that procedure. In fact, the memory is only allocated to that variable while the procedure is running. You could say the variable only exists while the procedure is running. Here, x is local to the procedure for button 1 and y is local to the procedure for button 2. If a variable is declared using the dim statement outside of a procedure, for example at the form level, then it can be seen by all of the procedures within the form, for example variable z. A variable declared like this exists for the entire duration that the form is running. Its lifetime is longer than a local variable. Declaring a variable with non-local scope is not necessarily very efficient. You might not want to share data between all of the procedures in a form, maybe just a couple of them. Also, you might want to share data between two procedures but limit the lifetime of the variables that contain the data. There is an alternative. In this video, I want to discuss a different mechanism by which procedures can share data, namely by passing parameters. I'm going to start by getting rid of Z and the entire procedure for button 2. I want to write my own standalone procedure. In fact, I don't need button 2 on the form anymore. I'm going to write a sub-procedure called do something. Notice I haven't bothered putting the private keyword in front of sub. It's not necessary. By default, the procedure is private. Notice also that there's no handles clause, which means I don't have any way of launching this procedure unless I call it from another procedure. So let's call it. Now there's nothing terribly special going on just yet, I'm simply passing control from one procedure to another. Let's give it a try. That's the value of x from the button procedure. Control is then passed to do something, which is outputting a message. And then control comes back to the procedure for button 1. The button code is running again. So, I can easily pass control from one procedure to another, but what I'd like to do is pass some data from one procedure to another. I can achieve this using what's known as a parameter, like this. As long as I use variable naming conventions, I can name the parameter anything I like. I've used the letter P, P for parameter. Notice that I now have a compiler warning on my call instruction. Argument not specified for parameter p. I can't call do something unless I pass it some data. So let's do that. I'm passing it the number 59. And to prove that do something has actually received that data, let's output it within do something. Let's give it a go. That's the value of x, the local variable inside the button code. Do something has now been called and it's running. And do something is telling us that it was past the value 59. Finally, control comes back to the button code again. It's important to realise that this parameter declaration is a bit like a local variable declaration. P only exists while do something is running, and P can only be accessed by do something. Let's set a couple of breakpoints on these programs and watch what happens when we step through them. The button 1 code is about to start running. 
x is given the value 5, and then its output. I can see what x is by hovering over it like this. I've also got one of my debugging windows switched on down here. This is called the locals window. It will show me the values of local variables within the procedure which currently has control. So I can see the value of x here as well. I'll tell you more about sender and e later on. If we continue stepping, the value of x is output. Now we're about to call do something. Control has been passed to do something. Notice that the locals window is now showing me the local variables for do something, which includes p, the parameter. Hovering over p shows me its value. It is very much a local variable as far as do something is concerned. A procedure can be passed multiple parameters. All I need to do is declare them separately within these brackets. This time I have three parameters separated by commas. Let's output all of them. I'm deliberately outputting them in the reverse order in which they're passed because I want to prove to you that they are passed positionally. The order in which I declare these parameters within the brackets matters. And notice I have a compiler warning again because my procedure is expecting three values this time, but I'm only passing it one. So P will be 59, Q will be 21, and R will be 7. By the way, just a little bit of terminology which you will come across when you're coding. These are called parameters. These are called arguments. Let's give it a try. There's x. Do something is running. And then the values of the parameters are being output in the order specified in the message box command. Now, so far, I've been passing hard-coded values to do something, but I can also pass the contents of variables, like this. Watch what happens now. In essence, the code for button 1 has set up three separate pieces of memory and it's put some data in them. And then in the call statement it's inviting do something to take a copy of the data in these three pieces of memory. So when the call is made, P contains a copy of the data in X, Q contains a copy of the data in Y, and R contains a copy of the data in Z. X, Y and Z are local variables as far as the button code is concerned, and P, Q and R are local variables as far as do something is concerned. I can prove it like this. Although P, Q and R were assigned new values by do something, when control comes back to the button 1 code, the values of X, Y and Z are still the same. We say that P, Q and R are being passed by value. In fact, I can include the by val keyword in front of them to make this explicit. ByVal means that the parameter is actually a copy of the variable that it was passed. You don't need to use the ByVal keyword because passing by value is the default. But I can change the way these parameters are passed by using a different keyword, the ByRef keyword.
This time I'm specifying that I want the parameters to be passed by reference. Watch what happens when I run my code. Do something is running. Those are the values it was passed by the code for button 1. When I dismiss the message box, P, Q and R will be assigned new values. Control has been returned to the button procedure. And notice that X, Y and Z now have new values, 100, 200 and 300. So what's going on? When we pass variables as parameters by reference, like we're doing here, we're actually passing pointers to the original variables. So P is the same piece of memory as X. Q is the same piece of memory as Y. And R is the same piece of memory as Z. Both programs are looking at the same three pieces of memory. We're effectively sharing those pieces of memory between the two programs. It just so happens that this program calls those three pieces of memory X, Y and Z, and this program calls those three pieces of memory P, Q and R. You say tomato, and I say tomato. We got back to a situation which is rather like declaring three variables with non-local scope. And if you think about it, parameters which are passed by reference must exist for the duration of the form. However, if there were more procedures within this form, then only these two can see these three pieces of memory. So there is still a benefit of passing by reference rather than declaring non-local variables. Now, there's one more point I'd like to make, is that I can actually pass an array variable as a parameter, like this. I've declared and initialized an array of five strings. And now do something is also expecting to be passed an array. Notice the empty brackets here specifying that this is an array rather than a regular string. And because I haven't specified the byref keyword here, then the default is byval. In fact, let's pass them all byval. And that output is coming from do something. Give it a try yourself. See if you can pass some data from one procedure to another, either as single items of data or as an array.